kind of in netherworld right now. Played a good round on the Pro Tour. It's been a minute. It's been a tough start to the season, so. I feel really good with the round. I made a bozo mistake on hole one, threw it OB, easy five. Just kind of got going from there. Kind of rough start, missed like a short circle one putt on, on one little straddle. Luckily I played skins yesterday, shot like 12 down with a bogey. And so I was like, I'll just try to carry that into today and the game's feeling really good. I've been on this like kind of month long slump since OTB Open. A couple things happened from keeping me from shooting a really good round. And you know, I feel like I play a lot better when I'm in like these like more lead card situations and I just haven't been there. Out of nowhere, I just turned together like five, six, seven, turned into eight birdies in a row. And then just a couple errant shots that I had two pars on, on the, on the back nine. And other than that, just birdied out. Looking to keep it up and keep loving this home crowd. Feels nice to be home. We are both, I think, probably a total hour and 10 minutes away from the course. So we grew up right here and it's so amazing to see two Iowa boys at top. Obviously we all play to win. So I think that it will just be just a little bit of grace on the putting green. I don't think I've played my best golf just yet. Today is a nice sign that it's a good move in the right direction. I'm just gonna try to stay within myself and play the game I know how to play. Try not to get too far ahead of myself. Try to get away from the expectation and just stay in the process of playing. Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the 2023 True Bank Des Moines Challenge here in Indianola, Iowa. I am Jeremy Colling. I am joined by Paul Ulip. Brian Earhart here in the booth today, filling in for a sick Paul Uliberry. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here, Jerm. Yeah, well, we have so many things to get into, but before we do that, we want to give Parker Welk a quick shout out one more time here on the broadcast. The pre-sale or pre-orders end July 1st. Get those two really cool colors, sweet shirt, sweet course here at Pickard Park. One of the favorites, I feel like, for park style courses. I think there's a phenomenal balance of woods, uphill, downhill elevation. There's open shots, there's par fives, there's challenging par threes. It's an interesting course in the Midwest here and new players to the tour as well as veterans both seem to really love this track. So just the energy out here in general is really high. We've got a few things to get into as we see the uh, players here and we see the leaderboard. Um, we have a canceled second round due to weather. So we are only playing a two round event and we have two local Iowa boys here atop the leaderboard shooting the 13 under course record here because it is a slightly new layout. Um, and they're gonna be chased by a ton of people. And because it's a two, two round event, there is just no telling where this winner is gonna come from. And also, I don't have any spoilers because I didn't watch this final round play out whereas you saw every shot play out. Well, I, I saw it from kind of the catch cam angle, so I'm really excited to see these shots come out from behind the tee pads. And the one thing I have to note here, Gannon Burr played one of his very first tournaments at Pickard Park. This has so much history for him. Oh, so cool. He played a doubles tournament with his dad here, and now he's playing an elite series event in the league going into the final round, and here we are in hole one. Yeah, hole one, par four, 795 feet. And you see how all these trees are calm? Well, go ahead and forget about that today because we are going to be dealing with, I would say, a top 20 windiest round of my career. And I think it's going to be the same for most of these guys. Um, very, very windy, high gusts. Yeah, I would say about 20 miles an hour out here. Once you get up to hole 10, they'll gust up to 30. And people are cheering for that shot. That is not the distance you would like to have on this hole, but keeping it in bounds was a premium with this shot. Straight head left to right. I mean, we've seen even some drives skip and then get blown right by the crosswind OB. So yeah, great shot by Gavin and Gannon. Yeah, as you can see, look at these feather banners. Yeah, they are ripping. Simon, this is a lot of trust out wide, but it's got the good stability and that is really good distance and accuracy. Honestly, surprised we didn't see more players just try to throw straight up the gut, honestly. It was a, oh boy, Greg has lost control of this one. I, yeah, that doesn't have a chance of coming back in bounds. It was definitely a play that you were considering, and then you stood there on the tee in the last second. It was like, no, just go Heiser. But 
you got to make sure that you start with Heiser. Greg challenging that Anheuser, but no. Oh, that's awful. He doesn't even advance. Yeah, there's a reason this whole average to 4.65 on the day. Oh, my gosh, Greg. What a nightmare start. And he started with a bogey round one on this hole and then rattled off 12 birdies to come out with an 11 under. And he's going to be starting off with a really big score. And with that crosswind coming in so steep, a lot of players are not going to want a chance just getting carried OB right. So they're just going to try to throw some sort of power backhand. Mm -hmm. Good play from Gannon, not taking any chances there. Gannon mentioned earlier in the week that he thinks Gavin has put on over 100 feet of distance to his game this season, which is insanely feet. impressive, to I be mean, honest. Uh, he was already crushing. That's, that's a big number to add on. Simon is getting aggressive. This is nice. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. Wow. 30 feet, pin high. Don't need to access the bullseye. Beautiful. And Greg still has work to do to get up and down to save the triple bogey. And it looks like he will be saving the triple. But man, that, that's a start that can... That's a start and an end. I mean, you've been that high up the leaderboard before. I mean, when you triple bogey, you fall so far. Even the slightest mistake. I mean, I, I was playing really well in mid way through this round. and took a triple bogey, and it just felt like it just ended all hope. But Greg's a champion, and he's a world champion. He's multiple-time champion on the tour, and I'm sure we're going to see some fight back from him. Long bid for birdie coming up just short for Gannon and Simon. It'll be a, it'll be interesting to see how he bounces back from that for sure. It just felt like the two discs that he was trying to throw in that win just instantly flipped out of his hand. Yep. And again, like you said, top twenty windy rounds. I mean, this gusting up to 30, 35 miles an hour. So jumping into hole two. Yeah, it's it's management. Just keep the disc in bounds. Let the other players make the mistakes. See a couple players up there. Austin Turner, five under through nine. That is an insane front nine. Wow. Austin's been playing some really great golf lately. Well, and it's interesting because there's holes like number two that are very challenging very for the lefties. Tough for lefty, yeah. And today there was a very strong right to left crosswind uh, that kind of pushed the disc forward down the fairway. So players were having to really challenge this wind swing it out wide and get it to push down the fairway yeah right to left off the tee and then it's pretty much a direct tailwind as you turn the corner and go towards the pin getting getting that one high letting the wind do all the work here pushing it around the corner yeah that's fine enough distance i think that low ceiling branch shouldn't be an issue for him i like how wide this one is you see that carry uh i thought that was way wider yeah it you know it you you stand on this tee you can see that out of bounds on the deep side and you think i can get that so quickly and then you just yeah simon the same mistake i saw all day long when players were throwing on this hole they just didn't trust their disc straight enough and then at the end let the disc get carried by the wind I think Greg's done better with it, but it still looks a little tight in the inside. Yeah, I mean, it, all of them catching that tree. They have another 100-plus feet between the edge of those trees and the out-of-bounds. Well, maybe like 70 feet. Going mid-range here. Look at this lift. Wow. Yeah. That was tricky. What the heck was that? How is it lifting with a tailwind? It was like a tail right to left on the shot, and yeah, I don't know, just a weird lift. That was so cool. It's a big forehand to go long from the first tree. Gavin goes one finger forehand. Not too many players on tour going one finger. Greg with a nice recovery birdie coming up. Yeah, I can think of him. I can think of... 
uh, Andrew Marweed, Dan Hastings, Dan, Dan Hastings, Schlitter. Yeah. Yep. There's a lot of solid one-finger sidearm players, and at this point, I can't say it's the wrong thing to no, do anymore. No, totally. I used to teach in my clinics. Exactly. You know, no one's doing this, so I would say don't do it, but now there's enough that it's like it's a credible option. Gannon putting his approach quite close, much closer than in round one. And Simon with a nose-up spin. That's a great birdie to pick up with a tee shot not exactly landing where they wanted him to. Tough bid. Mm -hmm. Coming back into that headwind, it's tricky. Gavin, I think I heard that he was inside circle one 14 times in round one. And he only missed one of those putts, and that's why he shot 13 under. Didn't even land in C2 one time. On the other pars, they were just approaches. But the the 13 birdies he had were all C1, and he just connected on all of them. It's just one of those days. Yeah, just getting that, getting right off the tee, man. Well, I have to say, Simon Lazat predicted that round two was not going to happen, so he laid in bed all day, and he admitted that he watched 10 hours of YouTube and went to bed. And here he is now on hole number three going into the final round. A smart man. <laughs> Rest up, my man. It's it, mid-season. We're getting up, we're in the second half of the season now. Bodies are starting to get tired, man. The travel catches up on you, catches up with you at a certain point. And I, I don't, I'm kind of envious of that. That sounds actually like an amazing day. <laughs> it was a good guess, that's for sure. Now Burr on three. I love how this hole has been playing this week. Yeah, it's... It's, whoa, he's not loving how that's playing. The ground play given uh, Gannon, sorry, the Gannon and Gavin thing is going to be throwing me off today. I'm sure of it. But the, yeah, the big skip there, that was tough. Yeah. So, I mean, if this gets grass first, it's great. There you go. The wood chips, big skip. The grass is very thick, so perfect. And remember the wind here coming out of the tunnel it's still blowing left to right, so carrying those skips even farther. So mm -hmm. luckily he hit that long grass. Beautiful shot. I wonder if he knew that was perfect out of his hand or if that's just like, please get down. You're kind of crossing your fingers and hoping. And a much straighter fairway driver out of Greg's hand. He probably wanted just a tad more hyzer. But I agree. I, I like the, the amount that they cut down mm -hmm. on this hole to make it fair. That's danger. Oh, okay. Did that just chain out? That just chained out and slid directly out of bounds. That's gonna be a, a putt for par, I believe. And that isn't even wet and it's <laughs> out of bounds. Talk about all time bad break. Well, first off, that leaf just cost him the ace. I mean, it, it came in he with He hit a heat. leaf. It slowed it down enough to not go into chains, and then it slides OB with not even going in the water. That is a get wrecked moment. Good God. And now he has this putt. Okay, at least you connect on that one. If that spits out, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm out of here, man. That would have just been awful. Good composure. Well done for both the Iowa boys. And Simon going to be tying up Gannon at the top. Or no, I'm sorry. He was two back. He was two back. Okay. And after hole three, we move on to yet another truly enjoyable par three to throw. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But also with this crazy wind. Wow. And Anthony Burrell, he's right there. definitely something that I'm excited to be a part of next week, the distance contest they're having out in Minnesota at the preserve. 
definitely check that out. It's going to be pretty cool to have the best longest throwers that we could get. There's a couple guys in Europe that we couldn't get, but all the guys over here in the States that, that boom. Big tailwind here. Simon swinging it. Oh, just stopping. And how is this wind playing for you off the tee? I mean, it feels like it was just distance wind. It was just, it was straight tail when, uh, when we came through, just a couple hours before these guys. If anything, tail right to left. And I mean, the kind of wind that can make oh. a disc do that kind of stuff. That is way long OB. Yeah. Wow. When you when you're in the warm up field, as Greg is throwing a decent line, it's low enough. I think. Yes. Okay. He he's on the short side. When you're in the warm up field and the wind is blowing like this, you're just looking around at all the other guys and you're just like, just smiling. Like, what's it gonna, what's going to happen today? I feel like it's just a lot of guessing. I mean, you have to make educated guesses and wow. play those lower. Oh, it, yep. that's Ob Long. You would never in a million years think Ob Long comes into play unless it's just ripping tailwind. But yeah, as you're saying. Well, it, it's just when you're throwing this far, it's really hard to make that educated guess. Yeah. And put it inside circle one. Gannon's going to have That's a, a long jump putt. Kind of a tricky downhill short putt. And anything outside 15 feet is, I mean, mentally grueling. Greg, great run. And that's not going to be an easy tap in. I mean, slightly downhill, back into the headwind. I think we can count on one hand how many times we've seen Simon lay up, especially with his the dad putt style that he likes so much. Him laying up, that tells you everything you need to see right there. Yeah, it's been that's a good putt. swirling all day. The wind's been gusting and changing speeds constantly. It's just very tricky to play in right now so yeah that was a, that was a good move from simon these are good putts i i'm interested to see this short guy that that uh gannon has to put i feel like it's a little trickier than meets the eye oh he ends up going right side solid delivery big applause great crowd here and they're approaching Pretty special place here on tour, The Hive, sponsored by Geico and Hy-Vee grocery stores. The, the, the Geico gecko is out there in full, <laughs> just full just attire. A, just amazing. The atmosphere was, was unreal, unmatched really in, in many ways. They and, were so excited to be out there and every single player got their own individual applause as they stepped up to the tee pad. And I love an ace run hole. Totally. Absolutely yeah, love it. Sure. Hole five, 330 feet. It's an island. A lot of players going hyzer. Right to left, ripping crosswind. Simon going high. This needs to be really overstable, and I think it is. Oh, but it's too overstable. Yeah, he was shocked that it did not get the carry. I am too. Got to start this with hyzer. Oh, he goes flat. Look at that. Greg mentioned wow. Great that trust. he aimed five feet right of the basket to throw that line. <laughs> My goodness. And he was absolutely trying to dunk it. Sure. This is a hole where playing for the Spike Heiser ace is a great way to park it. Gannon with a nice one. That's potentially into the wood line. Might have a low ceiling putt. Might be wide open. Crowd loves it, obviously. Missy Gannon hit metal that oh. morning, and I thought people were going to jump into the lake. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> oh, man. And there's the gecko. You can see him right up there. No emotion from the gecko on that on one. He was demoralized. Do geckos have facial expressions? Yeah. Okay. They save you money on your car insurance. <laughs> they definitely are. 
Big smiles. Fifteen minute call. Okay. And there was a neat little five hundred dollar CTP going out to the closest throw of the day. I don't know who ended up taking that down. Greg, unfortunately, not taking this putt down. So Gannon must be pretty close. Yeah, okay, so he's he's right there on the edge. And that's a big time bounce back birdie. We are just gonna be checking that leaderboard all day long. It's just so many people so close. I believe two strokes back was all the way down on the third card. And when the wind is picked up like this, it's like fourth and fifth card are licking their chops because their opportunities to jump up if they have a good round are incredible. Well, what's interesting is Gannon, uh, the day before I talked to him, he said, I want to play this day very conservatively because of the wind. I want to make other players make mistakes. And we'll see if that strategy holds up here yep. going into number six. Yeah, slight turn to the right off the tee. The fairway on the left side, OB, gets closer and closer the farther down your disc travels. So you want to make sure you're keeping your disc turned. Forehand is a common play here. We are going to have that tailwind coming off the water behind the players. This is heading to the right side of the fairway. But it's in the middle, and that's fine. I think on a calmer day, we might see more backhand turnovers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Greg obviously being a forehand, I don't want to say predominant, but a forehand heavy player. Wow. Oh, my gosh. What? If that was four feet left... That's to the elbow. That's like looking at the That's basket. That's looking at the pin. That thing was accelerating all the way to the tree limbs. Well, yeah, as it was as it was flattening out, it was getting lifted by the wind. It didn't look like anything impressive out of his hand, and it was getting more and more impressive. Well, actually, so right before they stepped up, Calvin Heimberg threw one backhand and got to the elbow. He was looking at the basket and actually made a run for the eagle, which I had never Whoa. heard of until that. Yeah, me neither. Well, when you're out of position on this hole, it's so tricky to get around the corner. Gannon needed to get that one higher for the late stall, as you're seeing Greg do here. This has a chance to get parked. If, oh. you're, if you're pinched on that right side throwing forehand, do you just try to crash the tree line? I saw a, uh, Jake Hevenheimer go spike Heiser over everything, and he, he bullseyed it. So kind of similar to this, but he even went higher. And there you go. There's a lot of room up high that I have never really looked at before. But I think when you're out of position, you have to get tricky. And, and Simon is going <laughs> flick cut roller. Okay. What? What creativity. And to pull that out right here in this situation. It was just kind of a very nonchalant forehand totally. roller to 35 feet. Decent effort from Gannon. He's got a little bit of comeback as that rolled off to the side a bit, but that shouldn't be a problem for him. Forehand cut roller birdie. That would have been a that would have been a good one. Mm. And you can see it with that triple bogey start, even with the birdie. He's all the way down in 17th place right now. So hard to bounce back from triple bogeys. It's just, you do not have that, uh, that opportunity to get away with those anymore. I mean, really for the last three years, you got triple bogey, it's night, night. Yeah. I mean, Gannon round one got the bogey on one, but then he went 14 for 16. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's a way to bounce back. It's all right. Well, good.
good birdie there from Bobby. Ezra Robinson. The brothers, the Isaac, the, the Robinson brothers. Look at that. hole that a lot of players were worried about going into the round i don't know why this hole specifically but a lot of people were mentioning man when we get to seven i, mean, I guess it's the elevated basket and it's so exposed to the wind huge light uh, left to right wind coming up here uphill a hole that is on the easier side in the calm and not that way at all in the wind unless you've just Throwing casual forehand flicks. Great shot from Gavin. Yeah, Gannon says this feels like it plays about 390, and he's going forehand. I was worried about this one going too far right, but it puts the brakes. 26 feet. This is a bit more consistent play, kind of fighting the crosswind. Look at this thing, drifting. Is that off the bricks? Off the bricks or off the, the koozie? Regardless, it was, it was pretty. Just beautiful. Only reason I ask if it's off the bricks or not is because his disc is gonna be, he's gonna pick it up, he's gonna have a whole new chunk out of it. I don't like the bricks, they're so, it's like Renaissance castle material. <laughs> I'll go get the, uh... The this cotton balls for you. This should just be made out of wood. And Simon's throwing an ace run. What is going on right now? I guess the whole soft germ. It's not. Not the bricks. The bricks are the hardest thing on the course. Like, do not want your disc connecting on that stuff. Easy putt to miss low. Beautiful. He has just put so much time in. I mean, I remember him touring when he was like 980 rated. Mm -hmm. and I had seen him in tournaments. I didn't really think much of him as a competitor. And he's still here. Reminds me of like a Luke Sampson type character. He has just cut his teeth on the road and just yeah. grinded his way to these positions. Oh, well, he's he's an athlete. He was a very good wrestler. Super athlete, yeah. And uh, yeah, took his skills into disc golf and has just taken that same work ethic that he had when he was a wrestler and put it into his new craft and it's great to see him doing well especially in his home state talk about Ezra also five under through nine currently with a two shot lead over three others this is a hole that I gotta empty my bag on every single time mm -hmm. I step up to the tee pad mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on number eight? Oh, it's just a fun I mean 580 that's reachable from the guys who only have 450 um, downhill the whole way but you can get creative with the stability. You can go with the wide hyzer. You can go with the flip up backhand fairway. Um, some guys in my car were getting cocky with mid ranges. Is that what this is? That was clean. And Bad skip, but yeah, that was clean. That was a beautiful shot. It's just always nice to see a disc travel 600 feet with really nothing in the way. He really likes throwing those stand ups that get to flat really late. Mm hmm. Greg's also angle master with the backhand. This one's going to be drifting left and needs to slow down because there is actually out of bounds deep in those woods. And he has found safety. Just like we were the night before when there were tornadoes in the area. Did that hit a stake or just the ground? I, I think, it's think just... he just hit some soft ground over okay. there. It's like you want to challenge the tree line, but you're afraid of dragging it too far right. And this, this is it. This is it right here. This is it. 
Yes, so nice. Gentle flex, trussing it down the right side. Like you're saying, you don't want to overturn it because that right side is nasty in there. But the right amount of trust, very nice shot for Gannon. Yeah, and he's putting his hands up to put the brakes on that. He knows if he doesn't hit the base there, that has a good chance of rolling down the hill, leaving him a 25-foot comebacker for the par. Not going to be low that time. Tailwind is true. Gannon in for the birdie. That gets him to 15. He's just one back of Ezra. And three in a row now for Gavin. Slow start. Back to under par now. It showed birdie. Now a couple players at 15. Oh, and a, must have been a bogey there from Ezra. So now we got three tied at the top at 15 under. Two of them share a last name and a home residence. <laughs> well, I... I I think number uh, number nine is an interesting hole because it just really takes reps to find your aiming point. Like, mm -hmm. what reference point do you use when you're trying to shoot at this basket? There's a tree in the background that's the tallest, and you can um, kind of line up the basket from the tee pad with that tree. But, I mean, other than that, you're just kind of throwing off into space. This crosswind is so stiff right now. It's 20, 25 miles an hour. That's why these chopped forehands are a little bit better option and they can't really feel anything. They're in the one place that's completely secluded from the wind. You know it's out there, but it's a lot of effort to get up that hill and actually like test it with some grass to see what's actually happening up there. And Gannon throwing another fantastic shot, this time with the forehand. Now, Greg. I like how low that was. That was directly over the hill. That's going to get him that extra bit of distance creeping up inside the circle. Still a challenging putt coming up. Going straight mid. And that one hits enough edge to stay inbounds. But that was testing that right side OB. Great effort. Simon. Needing it, having it. Three under on the front nine with a bogey. And and that is so that's good work here in that position on lead card. You're not gonna be losing too many strokes to too many people with three under. Well done from Greg. And those three birdies cancel that triple bogey. He's back to where he started. Yeah, it felt like in the beginning you you saw just the deflation for a few holes. It was like almost like a a hangover from the triple bogey, and now he's totally. finally sinking into the crowd. You can see him kind yep. of interacting with them. He's back on track. Well, we have nine holes left to determine a champion of a two round event. We don't. <laughs> it's so interesting because there's just so many things that can play out in these next nine holes. So many players are right there in the mix. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be windy and it's going to be a race to the finish line. Yeah, I mean, players can choose to be salty about a two round tournament or they can just take it as it comes and it happens. do the best they can. And that's that's all they can do. That's right. Well, thank you guys for joining. We've got nine more holes to go here in Iowa. We'll see you then.